again by the Attorney General of Florida. And Mayor, thank you. Um, I know you're going through a lot now. President, she was there that night with me. I think you were there with me until 3.30 in the morning when all these families were being notified, and it was horrific. So I know you've been through a lot, so thank you so much. Sure, um, great job. I have a couple issues that I'll wait and do I talk about them now? Talk or about them. Yeah, you can talk. About um, well, one, it, it addresses some of the things you said. In Florida, um, it's called the Baker Act, but it's our Civil Commitment Act, and it's, um, it's weak. And it's about a thousand pages long, and I've had my Solicitor General um, on it for four days, three days now working on it. We're rewriting it, along with Governor Scott, who's, good. you're going to meet with him. He's going to good. give you a ton of good information. We've been rewriting it, and we are going to bring in something called the Gun Violence Restraining Order. So if someone is civilly committed, for tw and you know, typically you can hold them for up to 72 hours, but people are getting out within 24 hours, the majority of them. So what we want to do is let law enforcement come in and take the guns. Good. They are a danger to themselves Which you can't or do others. right now. Well, they're, because, without being adjudicated. So because they're a danger to themselves. You want them to take the guns and not, when they are not go through uh, six months of uh, legal trials and everything Exactly. Else, but we okay. also have to give the, um, the mentally ill the due process in which they deserve, President. So what we're doing is they're going to be able to take the guns when they're taken into custody or into the hospital, and then when they're released, within 24 hours or 72 hours later, typically it's 24 hours, but law enforcement will have 72 hours to determine whether they should give those guns back or they can go to a judge and say, Your Honor, please keep these guns. We feel this person is still a danger to himself or others. Whether so this would not have custody. worked the way it's currently constituted. This would not have worked with Cruz as it's currently constituted. As it's currently written. So you're going to make changes? We're going to make changes. And one other thing we're doing about the reporting, President, which is huge. This is a big issue. Um, we need a clearinghouse, and that's what we've all been discussing. And we have created, and several of my counterparts have done it around the country, but we're, we're the biggest state doing it. It's an app, because kids now are on social media. And there were so many warning signs on Snapchat, on Twitter, on Instagram, and they were, they were posting them, they were sending them, but to all different sources. We're going to have, and we just got it written in our House and Senate budget, it'll cost at least half a million dollars a year to fund this. But what it does, kids, and, and so I met with 10 students, and they loved it, and they said, I'm empowering them. Um, three of them are my graphic designers. They're going to design the icon. Some are going to name it. They're helping us with it. But it'll cost probably about $100,000 maximum to develop. That's all in our budget. So what kids can do now, they can automatically send something that says, I'm going to buy a gun, just like Cruz was doing. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And one of the girls who I met with, one of the students, told me he had been doing this since middle school. He had bullied her, and she reported it. So it will all, they can instantly, and they can do it with anonymity. Put it in this app. Good. It'll go in the app, and it'll go to one clearinghouse with state law enforcement in Florida. Well, you mentioned the Internet. We have to look at the Internet because a lot of bad things are happening to young kids and young minds, and their minds are being formed. And uh, we have to do something about uh, maybe what they're seeing and how they're seeing it, and also video games. I'm hearing more and more people say the level of violence on video games is really shaping young people's thoughts. And then you go the further step, and that's the movies. You see these movies, they're so violent, and yet, a kid is able to see the movie if sex isn't involved, but killing is involved. And maybe they have to put a rating system for that. And you, you know, you get into a whole very complicated, very big deal. But the fact is that you are having movies come out that are so violent with the killing and everything else that maybe that's another thing we're going to have to discuss. And a lot of people are saying it. You have these movies today where you can go and have a child see the movie, and yet it's so violent and so disgusting. So we may have to talk about that also. Well, thank you very much, Pam. Thanks, Pastor. Thank you very much, Jeff.